Hi there, I'm Jamie Taylor. Welcome to Your Health Matters, brought to you by Kingman Regional Medical Center, your community-owned hospital. As you know, every week on this show, I have different healthcare professionals and guests talk about the different services and programs that we have here at KRMC. I've got an exciting guest on the show today, so stay tuned. We'll be back right after these messages. Welcome back to Your Health Matters. My guest today is Cindy Crawford. Thanks for being on the show, Cindy. Yes, thank you for inviting me. And you're, now go ahead and tell me again, you're ultrasound. I'm an ultrasonographer, oh. or you can call it ultrasound technologist. Technologist, okay, over at the Imaging Center. At the Imaging Center. Center. Imaging Center. And that's a big, long word, ultrasound. <laughs> sonographer. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, you got it. <laughs> okay, good, good. And how long have you been doing that? I've been doing ultrasound for about 23 years. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So you've had lots of practice. Lots and lots, lots and of lots practice. of practice. And yes. what do you have to do to become an ultrasound? Well, ultrasonographer? you know, there's different ways to become an ultrasonographer, but they most of the time you go to a two-year school. Okay. Um, they do have schools around here. Now, I did a little different. I went through the military. Oh. Um, and then I went through night school to become, first as an x-ray tech, and a lot of x-ray techs become ultrasonographers after they're maybe tired of, of x-ray. Doing the same kind of thing. Doing the same kind of thing. Different. Yeah, and they see that ultrasound's a, a viable alternative to that. Uh -huh. It's more fun, too. It's, why? Yes. Why is that? The anatomy, everything that you know about the body, it's, it's like a, I don't know, it's kind of like an art. Oh, you know, okay. you don't the, yeah. the machine. You don't push buttons. You actually you actually hold a transducer in your hand. And if it weren't for your skill of using that transducer to put it in different parts of the body, uh -huh. we the tech uh, the radiologist would never see anything. Oh, so, so we have to know. like have an art of moving this transducer on a patient's belly or their leg or the arteries in their neck. Okay, so mm -hmm. so it. Lots of practice. Then. Lots, lots of like, practice. Yeah. And, and lots you, of. like you said, you have to know the human anatomy you really well too. You need to know well the anatomy. <laughs> where yeah. everything's at. Okay. Well, and that yeah. makes sense. I've actually had that um, a done a few times. Like once was I had my thyroid. Oh. You know, I was having some issues. You know, laying my back and you're doing all <laughs> rubbing it on your neck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll practice a little later. We'll talk about that a little bit okay. more later. But cool. so you've been at KRMC for how almost long? three years. Okay. Yep. And where were you before that? I was at Western Arizona Regional Medical Center oh, okay. uh, there in Bullhead yes, for right. uh, almost five years. Okay. Before that, I had my own portable ultrasound business in oh, Las really? Vegas. So you traveled. I did that. I actually, yes, I pretty much. I mean, I, I was in that tri-state area, so, okay. you know, yeah. Las Vegas area. So would you, like, how did that work? Someone would call you, we need someone to come Well, here. actually, I had contracts. So I had different um, uh, outpatient facilities okay. and different doctor's offices. So they couldn't um, really afford to have their own ultrasound you equipment. Got it. Yes. So then they'd set up, like, once a week yep. or whatever, you're going to be there, and then they Perfect. That's it. That, yep. That's how it worked. Yep. Oh, they give is. me a nice long schedule, and I would just tote my little machine over there. <laughs> and then I'd set up and I'd do any patients they wanted me to do. Okay. And actually then I did cardiac too because you had to be a technologist that could do everything. Right, okay. Yep. So it's not a big piece of equipment then? Well, hey, they have portable the ones. It's kind of <laughs> cool. They have the machine, unlike at the hospitals, the hospital machines, everybody knows the big machines. Yeah. But this one actually went on a cart. Oh. The cart fit onto this these four wheels, right? And so you, you just roll it, push them around. and then I would put the cart up against the back of my truck, and then I would just roll the machine yeah, into my it. truck. Yeah, Sweet. probably only about that high. Oh, but then there's a monitor that makes it higher. Oh, okay, it's all so portable. Kind of, yeah, kind you of build comes it. Apart and <laughs> yeah, it comes apart, and then you put it back together again. You don't want to go cool. to too many contracts in a day. Right? Yeah, you want to keep it. Yep. One a, one a day probably and or one or two twice a day. Yeah, very right. good. Yep. Well, that's pretty cool. So, like you said, then you've had lots of practice, and then you mm -hmm. came to KRMC. Yep. And what kind of things do people, like I mentioned, I know I had one done for my thyroid. What mm -hmm. kind of conditions do people have that they would have an ultrasound done? Well, you know, the, it's we pretty much scan the whole body. Ultrasound can scan pretty much the whole body. Um, a lot of the patients that come in, they have abdomen pain, so we do an abdomen. Um, they have, uh, like you said, enlarged thyroid, so mm -hmm. we do a thyroid. Um, say they're having syncope or dizziness, then we may check the carotid arteries. Oh. Um, a swollen leg, a yeah. red leg, yeah. we'll check for uh, deep, what's called deep vein thrombosis. It's a right. blood clot in your leg. Right. So we check for that. Okay. That's a really big one right there. We do a ton of those. Okay. We check OBs, uh, basic OBs, not 
course, over at the mob, they do the full OBs. Right, right. But we do the basic OBs, most of those from the ER. Oh, okay. Make sure so that the baby's viable, okay. bleeding or whatever. Yeah. Uh, we do pelvics, we do testiculars, we do, uh, oh, tons of breasts. We're a breast imaging center. Right. Actually, you know, we are the breast imaging center of excellence. Yes, we are. That's pretty yeah, awesome. We are. Tons of breasts, tons of breast biopsies. So with the ultrasound that you do, you're doing the breast biopsies? Yep. So are we you set up for Dr. Johansson and our okay. great radiologist. So is uh, that like where I come in for my yearly, do mm -hmm. the tomosynthesis. Yep. I, I know all these words You now. do. <laughs> I'm learning all this stuff. But then, yeah. so it, does the ultrasound come in if they're seeing something and they want to look a little What different? happens, they'll go and they'll, um, it's, it's called a, well, we do the screening mammograms, right? Those are just basic. That's right. your yearly thing. Yeah. If they find a problem, then they automatically go from mammo to us, oh, okay. <clears throat> to ultrasound, okay. um, to follow up. A palpable if they feel something mm -hmm. and or if they if they find something on this tomosynthesis right. then we do the ultrasound and we further characterize it okay. once that's further characterized if it's anything other than a cyst anything other than benign or non-cancerous right. um, characteristics then we go uh, we actually will the radiologist will go and talk to the, the patient and let the patient know that we're going to do a biopsy now, since that was seen under ultrasound, right. the lesion of whatever sort, um, we will use ultrasound to guide the needle for the radiologist. Huh. So um, they hold their own transducer, we mark it, we get it all set up, right. we put a tray together, and then we assist the radiologist in taking a specimen of that area. Okay. So because we are the breast center, we do... We find the most minute little things, oh, even I've, on ultrasound. We've yeah, got the I've best heard equipment. That. I mean, as small as a little fingernail. The tip of my finger. Yeah. It's, it's it's phenomenal. I've never seen, I've never seen so many cancers found anywhere wow. that I've ever worked at. Um, I've never seen such cohesiveness between mammo and ultrasound, and then biopsies. I mean, it's when just a work smooth, together as a team. Yeah, like a so well, like a well-oiled <laughs> machine. It is yeah. amazing. And Dr. Johansson's the one who set this up. Cool. You know, since he's yeah. been here, right. it's just yeah. been smooth. That's awesome. I know he's yeah. been on the program, and we've talked about that. And we've had right. um, a couple of different ones. You know, Shelly came on when oh, Shelley, she was yeah. doing the Breast Love Cancer Shelley. Navigator. Yep. And, um, of course, now we have a new one. Is it Jennifer? Jennifer. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I knew new one. And so yep. we've talked a lot about the Catch It Early program and the, our mammographies that we're doing. And I know that they're actually working on a new program well, a new, um, they're going to do a special during the month of May oh. to for $55 mammograms to try oh, to how help. amazing. Yeah, to help those women who don't have insurance or have really high deductibles. Normally, we wow. just do it in October, but they thought for Mother's Day that it's would be a nice It's opposite side time. of the calendar, yeah, too. Yeah, right. You know, you know yeah, some folks, Mother's maybe they Day. Were, yeah, it's a nice, nice time Very to cool. be thinking of, you know, Maybe I need to get that yearly done, and I haven't had one for a couple of years. And That would be so great. Yeah. You so, don't want to miss anybody. Right. So yeah. ultrasounds then, are, I mean, how is how, how are ultrasounds different than x-rays? Well, number one, we're using sound waves. Um, people hear sound. These sound waves are far above the, um, the hearing, we call it megahertz, far above the hearing of sound waves. Um, those sound waves are so high that, that they're even above the whistle sound of a, of a dog whistle, I was whistle, just going right? to ask you, would dogs yeah, hear it? <laughs> right. The do well, that's, that's actually infrasound. We have infrasound. Anyway, I won't go into all of that. <laughs> anyway, so you don't hear it. Um, and those sound waves, do you want me to show yeah, you sure. one here? Go ahead. Yeah, okay, so brought I, I brought a transducer with me. Okay. This normally hooks up to the ultrasound machine. Okay. okay this is what gives me my electricity. This okay. is also it's like what, a giant plug-in. Giant plug, <laughs> giant plug-in, and this is my little wand or my transducer. Okay. Um, this goes on the skin. Now, you can use without, my arm. I'll let you all right, practice. perfect. Without <laughs> gel, we got to put gel on here. Mm -hmm. That's nice sounding. Um, <laughs> That's so a lot. <laughs> this, I, I'll wipe it off. This actually takes away the air between the skin and the transducer. Okay. If it weren't for that, you wouldn't see anything on the screen. It'd just be air. It'd be, it, we can't shoot through air. Okay. So anyway, the sound waves come from here and they, once I put this on your arm, mm -hmm. the sound Thank waves you. are going to go right straight through your arm and they'll bounce back on different interfaces. Like it'll bounce back from your bone. Okay. It'll bounce back from your muscle and your ligaments. And that bounces back. The sound waves bounce back to this. Okay. And this puts it in the machine. Okay. And the machine creates a picture out of it. And then it that's no radiation. 
Oh, it's only so. sound waves. Okay. This is the one good thing about ultrasound is that it is only sound waves and no radiation. I think a lot of people are under the misconception Your that daughter, this is that radiation. Was painless. Wasn't that easy? <laughs> no pain. No pain. There is never pain with this, except that sometimes, you know, <laughs> we, we joke about gassiness. Okay, if you're a patient full of gas, oh, this might abdomen. be a little painful on your Cause, abdomen. Because you're putting yeah, some we're pressure pushing. on. Okay. You're pushing a lot. <laughs> I was like, I don't have gas in my arm. <laughs> you know, you got, <laughs> your arm would be easy to scan. <laughs> so but, you know, people blood ask vessels that. show? Blood vessels will show. Okay. Um, blood vessels in your arm. Say like if you had a really red arm. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh my gosh, I think my arm is infected. But it could be that your blood vessel is clotted. You could have a blood clot. So, it's so I put that. not moving through. Yeah, we can see the blood moving through. And if it's not, we can see if it's not. Uh, Same thing with arteries up here. Yeah, and that's for yeah. a lot of times, right? The yeah, carotids. strokes. Yeah. I don't know that people a lot of times really think about that they need to have their carotid checked. I mean, we have prostate checks. We have GYN checks. Yeah. We have, what the else, the breast the checks. checks yeah. What about arteries and, yeah. and the, the plumbing to your head? Right. And that's kind of important. It is. It's I mean, like, people don't realize. this, nothing else works. Nothing else works. <laughs> and nothing else is fun. That's true. <laughs> so I can't think and recognize. <laughs> but... um. We do tons of these. I think Medicare is is now realizing that you need aorta. You know, you need to know mm -hmm. your aorta is good. Yeah. And you need to know that your carotids are good, that you're getting blood to your head. Yeah. And well, we do and a that. lot of that now with our interventional radiologists. They're able oh. to, if they find those kind of problems, they can yep. fix that so easily. I mean, it used to be major surgery. Yep. But now they're able, from what I understand. So true go in like with stents and or just like they're doing a stent up through the artery and like fix yeah. it and you're out of there you don't have all the you don't after. have to be opened up yeah well and that's a cool part too about ultrasound is that um as soon as that patient comes with a an arterial complaint mm -hmm. we just do the ultrasound and we tell like dr dunning okay right. he's yeah. our wonderful yeah. vascular surgeon right. yep. we let him know where the strictures are I mean, our arteries are like, like uh, you know, when you use your garden hose. Right. Okay, use your garden, garden hose wide open. That's how we like it, wide open. Yeah, lots But of if blood. you crimp it a little bit, what's going to happen to that water? It's going to come faster. It may even throw water up to your head too fast, right? So you can uh, stroke out. Because you're getting the same amount too, but a smaller area. Very smaller area. Plaques can break off, little plaques. Um, so we want to make sure that that hose is open. Uh -huh. So we tell Dr. Dunning, where are the little strictures that's making this blood flow you can faster? See all that. And then when they go to Dr. Porter, who's an interventional radiologist, right, right. he can put stents in there and he can and open up that area. To make it so it won't collapse back down. Yeah, again. no and no surgery, which yeah, is the best part. No surgery. That's I think the most exciting yeah. thing about this whole new team we have here. Yeah. It's so amazing. We are so little blessed. Kingman. Yeah. Yeah. It's who amazing. Would know? I know. I'm People so excited. are like a Kingman? <laughs> That's yeah. what I thought too, because you know I came here and I, you know, I've had a lot of experiences and I loved every place I've ever been. But I have to say that this place I've learned more. Mm -hmm. That and this is even with Navy doctors. Navy doctors yeah. I learned a lot, and they're always doing research. Right. I learned more here from these this little group of radiologists, and we have the best equipment. Yeah. And Kingman people. And, awesome. and the types of th diseases that they have, it's not just Kingman, it's everywhere. <laughs> yeah, but right. the types of diseases that they have, we're always finding something new. Amazing. And then we have yeah. the radiologist to explain it to us. That's cool. What am I looking at? I yeah, mean, I what mean, is that? <laughs> never saw this before, and they're like, I'm not sure either. Well, so let's go do some more tests. Uh huh. And, and we have them. Out. Yeah. Sweet. So yeah. now you mentioned Navy, and I know you had mentioned earlier that you did. You were in the military. That's where yep. you started your career. How long did you do that? I actually was in the Navy for six, and I was in the Army for six. So um, I know I switched over. <laughs> so the weirdest from, thing from you Army know, to Navy, or from Navy? Army to Navy. Okay, I've heard that before. Yeah, that, you know, yeah. I think so, I told you that I. Yeah. Um, yeah. I climbed telephone poles <laughs> and hooked up switchboard systems absolutely opposite. And then I went to the mil I went to the Navy and I was a corpsman. Okay. And, and that's away, you got what they call initial, it. Yeah. And that's how training. I started. Okay. Yep. And then you went from there. Well, I know we had yep. um, Kurt Manley has been on the program before and he was uh, a corpsman in the Navy and became a PA. That's why he's so great, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> Navy training. Yep, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Well, yeah. and all of that stuff and your experience, like you mm -hmm. talked about being in the Navy and you think you've seen it all, and then to be able to come, come here and 
learn even more. That's way yeah, cool. Yeah, it's really neat. And, and that's why I want to retire here. I'd like to, you know, spend the rest of my time here cool. learning and, uh, yeah. you know, working with these, I hope the radiologists are here that long because, yeah. you know, we're gaining... We're getting so much knowledge from them. Yeah. And we're well, like we'll, a good team, too. Yeah. You know? Well, we'll talk more about that. We're going to take a quick okay. break. We'll come back after the commercials, and we can talk more about that, too. All right. Sounds so good. So stay tuned. We'll be back right after these messages. Welcome back to Your Health Matters. My guest today is Cindy Crawford. Thanks again for being on the Thank show, Cindy. <laughs> we're learning all kinds of cool things here about ultrasound. And um, we were talking just before the break about our team, our really awesome team that we have here at KRMC of, well, it's the whole group, right? Johansson, yeah. Porter, Dunning. Porter, Dun yeah, with, at Brandt. I see Johansson, right. Brandt, Porter, uh, Dr. Allman, Dr. Bodley. Bodley. Dr. Yep. Johansson. Yep, that's awesome. Yep. And, and Young. And, and Dr. Dr. Young, Young, yes. That's the newest. The well, newest supporter I came at Together. the at the same time. Yep. So we have this great team now of radiologists that are able to do diagnostic, right? So mm -hmm. they when yep. they see the pictures that you take with the ultrasound, and I think it's really right. cool that you were showing before the break about how it's painless. Painless. I mean, it's, you know, un unless you yeah. have gas. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, funny. that's what we're going to talk about. about <laughs> <laughs> but also from an ultrasound standpoint, now, I can't just walk into the imaging center and say, hey, you know, I got this little thing. Would you hook me up with an ultrasound? Right, no. <laughs> so the... Correct procedures, first they're going to go see their primary care physician, yep. right, and talk about what their issues are, and then they'll get mm -hmm. a referral to the imaging center right. to have the ultrasound done. Exactly. So kind of walk us through, when if I my doctor said, yep, you need an ultrasound, what am I going to do to prepare for it, and what am I going to experience? Well, let's choose the most frequently um, performed study, which would be an abdominal ultrasound. Okay. Um, and, and the most frequently performed that actually has a prep. Oh, okay. So once you see the doctor, that you tell the doctor, oh, I have stomach pain, I have abdomen pain, then the doctor orders an abdominal ultrasound. Okay. Then what they'll do is either fax that request to us mm -hmm. over the, they'll fax it directly uh -huh. to us and we'll schedule it, and or they'll, the doctor will have you hand deliver okay, your request. Bring it over. Okay. Bring it over, and then we'll get you in. I'm mean, really fast. I mean, you usually get within the week. That's good. And it's really yeah. wonderful, yeah. 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 So you're not waiting, wondering, oh, when am I going to get in? Right. So then you're scheduled. They'll give you a time, like say it was Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So, which means you, because the abdomen, the abdomen most times has gas in it. Sure. Yeah. To yes. ultrasound, gas is concrete. Oh, can't so see it. Can't, can't see, see it. through it. Can't see through it. Okay. So we have you not eat anything after midnight. Okay. That's probably one of the hardest things that the patients do is not eating. No coffee in the morning. Uh -huh. It about oh, kills my, them. Yeah, that's my would be my tough one. I'm not very functional without my coffee. Me neither. <laughs> I hate I'm that not part friendly. of it. <laughs> not for grumpy and yeah. not yeah, not happy, but uh, <laughs> and so that they we try to schedule those early in the morning, and that way the patient can That's good. So take off and go to Cracker Barrel or whatever. Well, it's kind of like getting your blood work done. Same thing. Yes, when you can't, it's right. Same thing. You, I try to get it in at seven a.m. as soon as they open. First exactly. one there. Poke Please me. don't be the early one. <laughs> I know. Poke me so I can go get my coffee. <laughs> exactly. And so then we once we schedule them and they've been in PO, they come in. We just get them done right away, and they're on their way. Mm -hmm. The other study that's difficult, that's prep, would be for a pelvic ultrasound. Mm -hmm. I know that we get the most questions asking, well, why do I have to, why can't I eat? Yeah. Okay, well, because of the gas. Okay. Because okay. even though the, pel it, the abdomen's on top, yeah, right above the pelvic, and it's but it could. It's fly. still full of gas. You have yeah. abdomen. You know, you, you don't realize. I yeah. mean, some people are gassier than yeah. others. We can joke about that. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> we call them FOG, full of gas. <laughs> and we have our little terms for all it's that. Foggy. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Got it. <laughs> okay. Got it. But the other one is uh, the pelvic ultrasound. A lot of women ask us, "Well, why do I have to have a full bladder if you're just looking at my uterus and my ovaries?" Yeah. Why do I need that? Well, once again, the gas. Okay, what mm -hmm. is in our lower abdomen is yeah, gas. Right. So what do you use for a window? Our bladder becomes a window. So if the nice full bladder, granted, so you like, have to hold that bladder. So you have to drink a lot and then not Drink a lot and not, not, go, not urinate. Not yeah. 
Okay. And so then we're not there just to torture them <laughs> as they think we are, but we want to fool. And it's very, very imperative that they be full okay. so that we can see the uterus and then we move over and we see the, the ovaries from that area. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't know. I guess I never had to have that That's kind of done. painful. Yeah. I guess I said ultrasound's not painful, but that part's painful. The, but that's time. just having the full bladder. Just and, having a full yeah, bladder. And that's having all. somebody push on it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So fill up your bladder and then we're going to push on it. But, but it, then it's over. It's like 10 minutes. Yeah. 15 minutes it's over with yeah. and then you get to go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. So, Cindy, when you're doing those, I mean, it, well, you said 10 minutes, so that doesn't take very it's long. It's very quick. It's pretty cool. And even 10, when you're minutes, doing the yeah. breasts, same yeah, kind of the, thing? Well, now the breast is a little different because the, the radiologist has sent that patient for us to look really closely at an area. Okay. So uh, we don't just like, whoop, whoop, I look. Okay. And we really look through okay. that whole quadrant of the breast. Um, and we don't leave you hanging. I mean, the radiologist comes in right afterward and talks to you about oh, that's uh, the eventuality of either a biopsy, uh, follow-up. This is what we found and this yeah. is what we saw. And so Maybe you'll come back for another ultrasound. Mm -hmm. Maybe you'll come back for another mammogram. Okay. Um, maybe you'll come back for a biopsy. Yeah, okay. And then but what's nice about that, again, I think it's that quick turnaround. It's quick. It's boom, bang. I mean, you're in that's and out. That's one of the hardest things when yep. you're having health issues. Yeah. Number one is not knowing what's wrong. You know, so yeah. you want to know as soon as possible. Because I've always said, mm -hmm. I can deal with what I know. It's the not yeah. knowing. That's the hardest part. And just hanging there and waiting for that phone call or whatever. So yeah. to get those kind of results quick, and I've heard that, that we're able to do that really Very quickly quick. for patients. So they know what they're dealing with and what's the yeah. next steps, what I do now. Yeah, Moving and on. they don't walk away. No, well, for the breast ones, not all the ultrasounds, but for the breast, mm -hmm. we let the the ladies know yeah. before they go. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's really neat. Yeah, even though it may be not the best kind of news they want to hear, but at least yeah. they know. They know. Well, what's my next step? Yeah. You know? Um, and as far as the other ultrasounds are concerned, our radiologist turnaround time is probably 24 hours. And that's amazing. Yeah, it really I is. They're reading like 250. <laughs> A day. Wow. A day is what I don't I doubt would, that. Yeah. And that's on top of doing all the procedures. Oh, the procedures. I have never seen radiologists. Be, so you get to help with those kinds oh, of yeah. things? Oh, yeah. When I'm it? in the hospital, I get to help. I'm not there that often. But yeah. when I get there, I get to help cool. set up the trays. Yeah. And, and then we mark the area with the ultrasound because it was originally found by us or another modality. Right. Yeah. And uh, then we get to watch them hold the transducer and it's amazing they can hold that transducer and watch that needle go right into whatever part they're looking at yeah now I've, I've worked at places where the radiologist basically they have you hold the transducer and they put the needle in and they're kind of fishing. can you imagine how yes fishing they'll <laughs> find my needle find my needle i'm like i wish you would hold your own transducer yeah because you you're going to be able to tell better they yeah, are they know where they, they put it right but these radiologists are like, yeah. I call them sharpshooters. They just <laughs> go right in and they're, they're like bullseye. Wow. So we never really doubt that they've gotten the area. Yeah. yeah. Yep. They, and that's usually for sure biopsies. That for all the doing. biopsies, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I should have said that. Well, biopsies. that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's in, so you do that both inpatient and outpatient. Inpatient, though. outpatient. Okay. Yep. So you could have someone that comes into the hospital maybe having more serious um, right health issues because of it and then they're able to do that right there that's right there. very cool yeah. well like we talked about before the break i mean i just always consider how i consider us very blessed in Thank kingman you. to have this group well we have some amazing doctors here now i mean in the 10 years oh, that yeah. i've been here there's just been such huge growth and changes and the new healthcare professionals we brought in, like Dr. Dunning, you know, and oh, yeah. Dr. Montero, you know, all these, they're just amazing. And then all our radiologists as well, and having that Mayo training, that oh, Mayo yeah. backup even, because I know they're able to call on their, what I call you know, their... Call any time, right? Yeah, and, their yeah. colleagues that they went to school with or they trained with or they, you know, worked with. That would be so helpful for them. Yeah, yes. to be able to say, hey, I've got this, what do you think? Yeah, <laughs> and I noticed that too. I noticed a radiologist, I mean, my own, my own experience in watching them, they're, they're so close with the the doctors in the community, mm -hmm. you know, that they foster this this uh, camaraderie to where yep. they can work really well together. Yep, and they you know? can pick up the phone and call. Oh, yeah, like it. with Dr. Dunning now, the new vascular center, yeah. you know, that they built this thing together. Yep. You know, and they support it together. Yep. 
you know, and we well, get to be let in on that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's so neat. we could probably go on for another half an hour yeah. to an hour, but unfortunately our time's up. Okay. Thank you for being on Thank the show, you. Cindy. I always learned, like I said from <laughs> this, I hope you learned something today too. Thanks for joining us, and we'll be back next week with another great guest. Thank you.